Hey guys, so for our next video, what we are going to do is we're going to talk about probabilities, but specifically um, with regards to contingency tables. Okay, so contingency tables are really handy ways for us to organize uh, basically categorical data. Um, so what we are going to do is we're going to show basically just a hypothetical scenario of where people are asked whether or not they had lunch and whether or not they're happy. Okay, so what we can do is we're going to build this contingency table. Okay, so here I'm going to put whether if you had lunch or not we'll say no lunch and here we'll put happy and sad alright so basically everybody who responds they either responded that they were happy and had lunch or happy and did not have lunch or sad and they had lunch and sad and they did not have lunch so we can now go through and we can fill this out so let's suppose the following Okay, so let's say that in our, okay, we'll say that for happy and lunch, there were 60. And for happy and skipped lunch, we'll say that there were 20. And then we'll say for uh, sad and lunch, we'll say that that's five. And sad and no lunch, we'll say that that is 15. Okay, so those are the actual counts. So of the 100 people who took this particular survey, 60 said they were happy and they had lunch, and we see that 20 said that they were happy and didn't have lunch, etc. We can read through this. Now what we can also do is we can add in what are called the marginals. They are the sums of the marginals so that we can get, a, get a, some other numbers that are handy for us. So we label these as totals. Okay, and when we do this, we're just going to sum up either a specific column or a specific row. So if we look at this column, there's a total of 80 people who responded that they were happy, and there were 20 people who responded that they were sad. There were 65 people who responded that they ate lunch, <clears throat> and there is a total of 35 who responded that they did not have lunch. Now, the sum of the bottom here and the sum of this side marginal, each of those should add up to the same number. 80 plus 20 is 100. 65 plus 35 is 100. So this bottom corner is the grand total or the sum of all of our values on our interior. Okay, so the reason why we organize our data like this is because we're trying to organize it in a way that we can quickly ask some probability questions. And we can read this table and use it really fast in order to answer some of those questions. So let's go through and just define some events and let's find their, their um, associated probabilities. So let's start uh, with perhaps, okay, from this data set, if we were to randomly select one of these people, what is the probability that they are happy? Okay, so remember from our like fundamental rules of our probability that when we look at the probability of a specific event, it's the total number of outcomes for the event that we're interested in divided by our sample space. Well here, our sample space is this 100. There are 100 possible outcomes that, that we can look at. And we're saying, okay, of those, what percentage of them are happy? So what we can do is we can go and look at, there were a total of 80 people who identified as being happy out of the 100. So we can just write 80 divided by 100. All right, so that's just a simple probability. We could look at other probabilities like that, like the probability of being sad, or the probability of a randomly selected person having eaten lunch. Let's do that one just so that we've got both directions. So the probability now of lunch is equal to, well, let's find the sum of our lunch. So we come 
lunch off to the side. 65 people identified as saying that they had eaten lunch. And we can divide that by our total. So 65 out of 100. All right, so these are pretty, this is a pretty handy and easy way to organize our data and talk about some of these questions. Okay, so let's take it a step further. Let's ask some other things. Let's do an intersection question. Okay, so let's do what is the probability that somebody is happy um, and they ate lunch? Okay, so here we need an intersection. We need to figure out where somebody was happy and whether or not they ate lunch. Okay, so one thing that we can do is we can kind of circle these probability or circle these events so that we can kind of see where they intersect. And as we get better and better at it, uh, it'll be uh, easier and easier to do. So for the happy, I'm going to circle with green. And for ate lunch, uh, let's circle in this kind of pink color. Okay, so for the happy, let's start off with happy. These are all the people who identified as being happy, okay? And all the people who identified as eating lunch are right here. Okay, so we can see that, that these intersect. There are people who identified as both being happy and as eating lunch. And as we can see, that intersection is in fact 60 people. And now we just need to divide by the total number of people in our sample space again, which was 100. So a randomly selected person from this group, uh, you have a 60% chance of them having responded as both happy and having eaten lunch. All right, so we've got an intersection. Uh, let's do a union for good measure. So let's do the probability of, let's do happy union skipped. So we'll do happy or skipped. Okay, so in order to do this, we're going to break this guy down into a couple of pieces. So what we can do is we can in fact say that we need to figure out what is the probability of happy plus the probability of skipping minus the probability of happy intersect skipped. All right, so if we can find out those three, uh, we should be good to go. So we already figured out happy. That was the 80 divided by 100. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that down here. Let's do it a different color. Okay, so probability of happy is 80 divided by 100. All right, so now we need the probability of have them having skipped lunch. So that would be our no lunch. So that would be 35 out of 100. Now we have a problem. If we were just to stop here, we would have double counted this intersection of happy and skipped lunch. So what we need to do is we need to say, okay, happy and skipped lunch is this intersection right here at 20. So we want to subtract off 20 out of 100. And that leaves us with a grand total of 95 out of 100. And that's how we can, can do a union. So, so far what we've kind of done is we've found out like individual probabilities, we've seen how we can do uh, intersections, and we've seen how we can do unions. All right, before we close off this video, let's do one more, and let's look at a complement. Okay. So let's look at what is like the probability of, let's do happy complement. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can look at this. 
Uh, the one way we can see, so, well, the opposite of being happy is sad, so we could just look at this probability. Or, probably the better way to do this is, remember, when we look at the complement, we can do 1 minus the probability like this. So if we're looking for a happy complement, we can do 1 minus the probability of being happy. Okay, so let's grab this probability of being happy again. So we've got 1 minus 80 out of 100, and that leaves us with this 20 out of 100. So remember, complement, whatever the event is, the complement of the event is everything that is not considered the event. Now we could do more complicated ones too. We could look at, okay, what's the probability of being uh, happy, intercept, skipped, or sure, we can do that one, and take the complement of this happy, intercept, skipped. Okay, so happy, intercept, skipped, remember, is this 20 out of 100, and the complement of that is everything, everything else, uh, which would leave us with uh, that 80 out of 100. Anyhow, so there are lots of ways that we can kind of go about and do these different ones, but just as kind of the basics, this gives us probability of events, we have intersection of, the, of two events, we have a union of multiple events, and we have the complement of events.